Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is that you are tuning in. It's a blessing for us to worship God together. I'm certainly grateful to your pastor, Pastor Ken, who invited me to be your preacher on today. I don't take it lightly, the invitation. Thank you so very much to all of the leaders of your great church, to all of the youth, to everyone. I tell you, it is a blessing to be able to gather together again for our Lord's sake. I want to go ahead and bring you greetings from the Mount Peace Baptist Church, which is located in Raleigh, North Carolina. My pastor is the Reverend Dr. J. Vincent Terry Sr., and I'm so grateful to serve there at Mount Peace Baptist Church. So I say hello to you. I hope that you are well, and if you are not, I am praying for your healing. Whatever's going on with any of us, we must always remember that we are in this together. So I want to uh, open with a word of prayer. You've heard the scripture for this morning found in Genesis chapter 37. Now I'm going to read that once more from the New International Version of Scripture, but I want us to pray before I read. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to delve into your word. God, I pray that our lives will be changed. In the name of Jesus, amen. So again, I want to read the scripture on this morning. I'm going to preach from Genesis 37, verses 1 to 4. I want to read it for us from the New International Version of Scripture. The Bible says, Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. So that last verse, verse 4, says that when uh, Jacob's brothers saw that their father Israel, their father Jacob, loved him more than any of them. They hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. So on today, I want to talk about uh, what to do when people are hard to love. Yes, what to do when people are hard to love. Hmm. What to do when people are hard to love. Have you ever thought about that? I mean, just the idea that some people may actually be hard to love. Well, what do you do when people are hard to love? I must tell you that, you know, there have been plenty of times I've read these scriptures and I immediately wanted to comfort young Joseph. I don't know. Maybe you're like me. Maybe when you read these scriptures, you know, uh, you wanted to immediately gravitate to Joseph. I mean, after all, Joseph is a young man. The text tells us he's only 17 years old. So many times when we think about young people, we want what's best for them, right? So then we want to gravitate to Joseph. Not only that, but it wasn't Joseph's fault that his dad, I mean, Jacob, really like loved him more than the other brothers. That wasn't his fault. I mean, because Joseph was born to Jacob in his old age. He made a robe for him. He loved him. We want to gravitate to Joseph. And yeah, I mean, the Bible tells us that Joseph was a snitch, right? The Bible says that he brought a bad report about his brothers to their dad. So yeah, he was a snitch. And there's a saying, uh, snitches get stitches and end up in ditches. So yeah, 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 I, I know he, he was a snitch, but boys will be boys. Gravitate towards Joseph. But on today, I want to really more so consider Joseph's brothers and their stance. 
I'm not going to immediately run to comfort Joseph. And I, I want us to consider not immediately running to comfort Joseph. Not saying that he doesn't need it, but let's just look at the brothers. I mean, these brothers, maybe they weren't just angry. Maybe they were just trying to figure out, how do I get what Joseph has gotten? Look at that ornate robe that he has on. I mean, look, look at this guy. I mean, look at the confidence that he has. Maybe the brothers weren't just angry. Maybe they were just wondering, wow, I mean, I don't get it. I'm confused. What is it about Joseph? Maybe they were just challenged with this idea that Joseph was hard to love. Perhaps that's what it was for these brothers. Maybe Joseph was hard to love. I was reading something the other day and uh, this article and it talked about people being hard to love. And I thought it was pretty interesting because thinking about this idea, sometimes we don't want to maybe be honest about people being difficult to love. But I like this story because it challenges us to really think about the position of the brothers, even if we didn't gravitate to them immediately. Well, the article talks about 10 signs that you're hard to love. Listen to this and think to yourself, wonder, I mean, can some people be hard to love? Well, the article suggests these are 10 signs that you are hard to love. <laughs> Number one, you don't know how to apologize. <laughs> Number two, you never compromise. Number three, you're unpredictable. Number four, you're flaky and unreliable. Number five, you hold on to old baggage. <laughs> Number six, you put up emotional walls. Maybe you're hard to love. Number seven, uh, if you're self-destructive. Number eight, you're dishonest. Number nine, you're bad at communicating. Number 10, you don't believe you deserve to be loved. Maybe some people really are hard to love. What do you think? I mean, here was Joseph, the son of Jacob and Rachel, and living there in the land called Canaan with 10 half-brothers, one full brother, and at least one half-sister. He was Rachel's firstborn, and he was Jacob's 11th son. Of all of Joseph's sons, uh, all of Jacob's sons, Joseph was preferred over everyone else, even to the point where Jacob made Joseph a long coat of many colors. So then at 17, here's Joseph, and those brothers disliked him, but listen to this part. If you continue to read uh, chapter 37, you'll find that Joseph had two dreams. And these two dreams made his brothers eventually plot his demise. So listen to this and, and think about if maybe Joseph was hard to love. I mean, the first dream. Joseph and his brothers gathered bundles of grain. And those that his brothers gathered bowed to Joseph. That was the first dream. Well, then Joseph has a second dream. And in this dream, the sun, the moon, and the stars, 11 stars, they bowed to Joseph. So then these dreams, they really implied Joseph's supremacy. So this angered his brothers. Joseph, the young man who perhaps was hard to love. Uh, what do you do with difficulty to love? What could these young men, his brothers, had done with this feeling of it's hard to love Joseph? Well, I would suggest that the first thing that they would have needed to do was simply to be honest with themselves. If someone is hard to love, you need to be honest with you. I mean, the brothers' feelings, they were defined as hate, clearly defined. But I wonder if the hate that they had towards Joseph was not just because of what Joseph was, 
but it was because of what they were not. I wonder if hate has something to do with not just what other people are, but with what we are not. Hmm. They would need to face themselves. That person in the mirror that you see every day. There is a uh, awesome uh, black playwright. He is deceased now. He was a great writer by the name of James Baldwin. He wrote, Nobody Knows My Name. When thinking about being honest with you, this is something that James Baldwin said. He said, one can only face in others what one can face in oneself. On this confrontation depends the measure of the wisdom and compassion. This energy is all that one finds in the rubble of vanished civilizations and the hope for ours. Hmm. The energy to confront oneself. The energy to confront yourself. The brothers would have to consider the psychology of hate. What's going on? Let me confront me. What's going on inside of me? What does my hate for Joseph do to my mind? Could this hate produce negative actions? They would have to confront themselves, each individually. Can this emotion of hate govern my life? Could my life be plagued by this emotion that takes control even every time I see Joseph? Will this emotion called hate destroy me? I would suggest if I were to be in a room with these brothers, that, that would be the first thing that I would suggest. What to do when people are difficult to love is to confront yourself. But not only being honest with yourself, you have to really be honest about the situation. The fact was that many of us, I mean, the fact is it seemed unfair. I mean, what kind of parent would love one child over the others? Oh, yes, socially, this is the way that we, we uh, approach families, right? What kind of father would love one son over the others? Perhaps being honest about the situation, it's unfair. I have intense feelings, um, but I'm maybe not the only one feeling this way. We know that not just one brother felt this way. The Bible tells us that the brothers felt this way. So there was shared familial pain. Joseph may have been labeled as the problem, but the entire family had an issue. I wonder if the family could have been honest about the situation, even to the point where it moved them to sit down and have a family meeting. You know, discuss family dynamics. I don't know if they did that. I, apparently, I, I guess they didn't. But, but, but what if they would have had a family meeting? What if the parents would have sat down? We would have had Jacob there, right? We would have had uh, uh, Rachel there, Joseph there. What if Joseph could have met with his siblings over the feelings? What if the siblings could have talked to one another? You know, maybe have some type of a family meeting. Like I'm saying, Reuben would have looked at Simeon and Simeon would have looked at Levi and Levi look at Judah and Judah look at Issachar and, and Ezekar. And, and what if Ezekar uh, looked at, at Zebulun and, and then Zebulun looked at Dan and Dan looked at Naphtali and Naphtali looked at Gad and Gad looked at Asher and then Asher looked at Benjamin. Well, some people don't really know if Benjamin was alive at that time. Some scholars say he was there. He was alive at this time. Some say he wasn't born yet. But what if there was a family meeting? I mean, how can we reconcile these truths, family? Sometimes families must have difficult conversations. Sometimes families need to gather around even to talk about hate and biases and prejudices and traditions and actions and history. Every situation needs a champion. I wonder who could have been the champion in this family. Oh yes, we can look at Joseph, but Joseph may simply be the excuse. 
What about the underlining things going on in this family? Who's going to be the hero for the family to discuss difficult things? Who's going to be the hero in the church to discuss difficult things? Who's going to be the hero in the community to discuss painful things, even to face the pain? But you know, sometimes even at dinner tables, we don't always discuss the pain. We don't always discuss those things that are uncomfortable. America itself, I would even say to us on today, hasn't faced the pains of injustice and racism in many cases. And this has caused some bitterness. Some of the bitterness that we see in 2020 is because there has not been a coming to the table, if you will, of America. And so when that same playwright, black playwright that I mentioned before, James Baldwin, addressed the topic, he said, people often say to you in an attempt to dismiss the social reality, but you're so bitter. Well, I may or may not be bitter, but if I were, I'd have good reason for it. American blindness or cowardice allows us to pretend that life presents no reasons for being bitter. So then being honest about a situation is imperative. I wonder if this family could have gotten ahead of the bitterness that the, that, the, that the brothers felt. I wonder if this family could have gotten ahead of the negativity that the family, that the brothers were facing. I wonder if the family could have gotten ahead of negative emotions. What did you discuss? Before, you see, many times we want to talk about the what without talking about the why. So then if people are difficult to love, I have to be honest with myself that I feel what I feel. I have to be honest about the situation. But you know, people get to choose what they want to be. And so this means that after I've confronted myself and after I've been real about the situation, I have to accept freedom. I have to be free because some people can choose to be in the bondage of hate. Some people choose the bondage of hate. You see, many of his brothers, they did not change their disposition. The Bible says that they hated Joseph and they could not speak a kind word to him. They did not speak a kind word to him. But I wonder if Joseph, if he could have harbored feelings in his heart to where he became part of the bondage. You see, you have to be so careful that just because people choose hate doesn't mean that you have to be part of the bondage. And that's why we must choose Jesus Christ. We must choose the freedom that comes only through Jesus Christ. You see, when Jesus, when he began his earthly ministry, he announced that he was the one that God sent. The people had been waiting since the fall of humanity. And now, here was this Jesus, this Messiah, this Savior of the world. He was humanity's freedom. And so he conveyed this message. He did this by reading a particular passage of scripture from the book of Isaiah, a passage that his listeners knew referred to the Messiah, a passage that his listeners knew referred to the Savior of the world. The words had been written hundreds of years earlier and he spoke a new freedom. Oh, I know we love to hear, you know, this America is the land of the free. But Jesus talked about a new freedom. I know that we talk about freedom in, in having good credit, right? Oh, but Jesus talks about a new freedom. I know that we talk about freedom in different ways. But Jesus, when he stood up. In Luke chapter 4, verses 17 to 21, when Jesus stood up to read, he was saying that liberty would come through him. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place 
where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. <laughs> and he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And all the eyes in the synagogue, they were on Jesus. They were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So then we must choose freedom. Freedom through Jesus Christ. Freedom that Joseph's brothers did not see. Freedom that kept them. No, it didn't keep them because hate kept them. They made a choice. And so then in 2020, we must make a choice. We must make a choice to follow God's word, but it's difficult to follow a word that you do not know. So then, regardless of what goes on around us, we must be sure that we take on God's word, that we hide it in our hearts. And no matter what type of negative energy tries to divide us, we know that anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister, is still in darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light. We must cling to God's word and know that above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. No matter what goes on around us, we must remember Proverbs 10, 12. Hatred stirs up conflict but love covers all wrongs. So my brothers and sisters, some of us may be hard to love indeed. <laughs> you may be hard to love. I may be hard to love. But all of us can be loved with a heart that dedicates itself to see through the eyes of God. They may be hard to love. I may be hard to love, but see them through the eyes of God. You may be hard to love, but thanks be unto God that there are those who see you through the eyes of God. So then when people are hard to love, you must confront yourself and ask, through what lens do you see them? God bless you, my brothers and sisters. May you stay with God. May you keep God's word in your heart. Be blessed and live in the light. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.